Ever felt like your feet have a mind of their own? I've had countless drummers who shared this exact frustration. But today I'm revealing a five step plan that will help you play tight single strokes with your feet. You won't want to miss this one. How many times have you faced this exact problem right here? Every time I attempt the ankle technique, my feet tend to sync up and hit in unison. I don't know what to do to get them to alternate. Let me tell you, you are in good company, my friend. The struggle with playing tight single stroke double bass is a common hurdle. But today we are not just addressing it, we are conquering it. This is the five step plan I've used myself to get rid of this frustration and it worked great for our students at the Drum Technique Academy as well. So stay with me, especially for step number three. Trust me, it's transformative. Before we delve into the nitty gritty, let's set a solid foundation right here. So right now we first want to focus on practicing with each foot separately for long periods of time. Talking about playing for 5 to 10 minutes straight without stopping. When using the ankle technique, the most comfortable starting tempo for most drummers is between 160 to 190 beats per minute. So pick and choose a tempo that's comfortable for you. This is going to be your workout tempo for all upcoming steps. So let's start off by playing eighth notes with your leading foot, in my case it's the right foot, for five minutes straight. Then continue with the other foot and repeat the same exercise again. During this workout, make sure that both feet are placed around the same spot on the footboards. The main goal of this first step is to be able to play at one specific tempo for long periods of time. I actually have seen this quite often that drummers start combining both feet with the ankle knee without being able to play at the same tempo for long periods of time with each foot separately. That my friend is a big no-go because if you aren't able to play the specific tempo with both feet easily, then combining both feet to play double bass, especially with the ankle technique, will not work. When practicing, also make sure that you lock in with the metronome at all times. So once you're done with this first exercise, let's continue with step number two. This one brings another dimension into play. Ever thought how your hands can affect the double bass playing? Step two is all about coordination. Right now we want to take away some of our focus from our feet and shift it towards our hands. So the feet are still playing eighth notes with each foot separately, five minutes each at first, and now we add in our hands. Eighth notes with your right hand on the hi-hat or the right cymbal, and we also want to add the backbeat on two and four or on three of every bar. So again, that's a 10 minute exercise for both feet and the first step of shifting our focus away from our feet while they are still playing tight to the click. The main goal of this second exercise is to test if we are able to stick to the ankle technique play tight and relax to the click even if we have to focus on something else like our hands in this case. And now let's take this even a step further because with step number three we integrate the well-known classic book Stick Control. So I'm pretty sure that most of you have got a copy of Stick Control by George Lawrence Stone at home. So for this exercise, we are going to combine the basic stickings of the first page of stick control with our feet. The first basic stickings are singles leading with your right hand, right, left, right, left. Then singles leading with your left hand, left, right, left, right. Then followed by doubles and so on. The great thing about this third step is that within this one simple exercise, we are working on our side reading, the tightness with our feet, technique, and endurance all at the same time. So for this exercise, you want to play with each foot separately at first again, at the exact same tempo we've used before. Next, you want to play the stickings of stick control page one, eighth notes with your hands on top of that. I also recommend to use two different sound sources for your hands right now. An option would be to split your hands between the hi-hat and the snare drum, or like in this example, just split your hands between the snare drum and the floor tom. With this exercise, we actually have to focus on side reading. This shifts our attention away from our feet. So if you're able to make it through the whole first page with your hands and your feet are still using the ankle technique and playing tight to the click, then you are ready for step number four. Actually, after finishing this third step, you might already feel a sense of accomplishment. But actually, step four is the real litmus test. That's the main exercise we're here for. 
Now we want to shift our focus back to our feet. This means we are not playing with our hands any longer, but we start to play single strokes with both feet. With these past three exercises, we have built a solid foundation and we've trained our feet and our muscle memory, really important, to play tight to the click at a specific tempo, which should work even if we don't pay a lot of attention on what our feet are doing. So here's the fourth exercise. At first, you want to start out by playing eighth notes with your leading foot. In most cases, this will be your right foot. Then after a couple of bars, add in the left foot as well. It's important to do this exercise at the same tempo that you used before when you followed steps one, two, and three. We need a tempo that's easy for both feet to play along to. That's actually the trap that most drummers fall into. If you start to combine both feet to play double bass without developing the skill to play at a specific tempo with each foot separately at first, you will struggle and most likely fail. So when combining both feet, one out of three things can happen. <laughs> Option number one, you will start to play 60 notes single strokes with your feet right away. Option number two, you will start to play flams with your feet. <laughs> or the third option is that your bass drum beaters will hit the bass drum at the exact same time, so-called unison strokes or flat flams. For most drummers, then first working on this, they will switch back and forth between single strokes, flams, and unison strokes all the time. Our main goal right now is to keep the beater swing going and try to extend the period of time when we are playing single strokes and decrease the amount of time we are playing flams or unison strokes. Yes, I don't want you to stop playing if your feet switch from single strokes to flams. Keep going, focus on what your feet are doing and get back to those single strokes as quickly as possible. With this exercise, you will also discover that it feels completely different when playing single strokes in comparison to unison strokes, for example. Single strokes with the ankle technique give you this feeling of lightness and being well balanced and grounded, while unison strokes can set you off balance and feel more stiff. Those of you that have experienced both know what I'm talking about. Once you've conquered this, there's a final lesson to remember, and that's what step five is all about the minimum effective dose principle. Practicing like I just demonstrated takes a lot of focus and attention. That's why three to four practice sessions per week focusing on double bass drumming is more than enough to get results. If you work on this too much, your attention will wander off and chances are high that you will start to store bad habits to your muscle memory. This way it will take you way longer to master this. So if you're just starting out, then I recommend to focus on steps one, two and three at first. If you play with each foot separately for five minutes, then this will result in a total practice time of 30 minutes for steps one to free. That's more than enough time for a solid practice session. Remember, too much of anything isn't beneficial and that holds true for drumming too. Step 5 is about understanding your body, respecting its limits and practicing restraint. While passion might drive you to practice endlessly, wisdom lies in moderation. So restrict yourself to 3 to 4 double bass practice sessions per week, each one around 20 to 30 minutes long. It's not just about avoiding bad habits, but it's also about letting your muscles remember, recover and refresh.